Brother Given has given us a lot of good matter <clears throat> regarding the table of the Lord to think about. And so I've been exploring more about the cup. <clears throat> Um, because we know this is very profound, it's something that I, I'm, and I'm sure we, got, we fellowship in this, that we want to see more of this. We're not satisfied with what we see right now. <clears throat> so I considered uh, three different places in Scripture that speak about the cup. <clears throat> what is the cup? Well, Matthew and Mark's account <clears throat> of what we call the Last Supper Jesus says, he, he takes the cup and he says, this is my blood of the New Testament. Speaking of what's in the cup, in the cup is his blood and then of the New Testament, a particular blood. It has a particular identity, an association. <clears throat> he didn't say this cup represents my blood or what's in the cup represents my blood. That's not what he said. <clears throat> he said, this is my blood. Only Jesus' blood makes the covenant valid. It's my blood of the New Covenant or New Testament. <clears throat> I thought that without the blood of Jesus, see, God's, the words of the covenant were nothing more than, than words on a page without Jesus' blood. <clears throat> I hope I'm not out of order by saying it this way, but it's like Jesus' blood quickened the covenant. It's like he brought the words to life by his shed blood. <clears throat> the covenant is no longer words written on a page, but now it's active, it's working, it's in force because of Jesus' shed blood. In, in the cup is his blood of the covenant. Wouldn't you like to drink of that blood? <clears throat> what blood was he talking about when he took the cup after the supper? The blood of the new covenant. <clears throat> it's the active ingredient of the covenant and the only blood associated with the covenant that God made. Then in Luke's account of the, this last Passover, <clears throat> Jesus says the opposite. He says, he says, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Just reverse of what he said in, in Matthew and Mark's account. <clears throat> and Paul quotes it that way in 1 Corinthians 11. He says, the cup is... <clears throat> the New Testament, in my blood. There is definitely a difference between the two statements, but both are true. In one place, Jesus says, he holds the cup, and he says, this is my blood. In another place, he takes it up, and he says, this cup is the New Testament. <clears throat> so what, is, what, what are we doing here when we drink of this cup? What is the cup? What, it is, what is it about? The cup is the New Testament in my blood, and it is my blood, Jesus' blood, of the New Testament. Now, it's a cup <clears throat> is presented in the scriptures in, in several places. It, in, it's always talking about the contents of the cup are going to be given or consumed by someone. For example, there's a cup of wrath. You know, that means if, when God's talking about a cup of wrath, he's saying someone, his, his anger has risen and someone's going to drink of what's in this cup. <clears throat> So the Holy Spirit uses this uh, like a picture for our mind, our minds, to get the idea of what God is doing. Whether the contents of the cup are good or bad, whatever cup has been given to you, you will partake of it. <clears throat> it's the, the cup is like the lot that God has determined for you. Now, in this cup won't be just like a taste test where you take a sip and you, you decide if you like it or not. That's not what we're talking about, or it's not what the Lord talks about when he speaks of a cup in the scripture. It's, it's all consumed. It becomes part of the one who drinks it. So there's no such thing as taking a sip of the cup and then pouring the rest out. <clears throat> I hear a couple of good examples of the use of the cup, the word cup. In Psalm 16, verse 5, the Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. So the psalmist here, he was considering what God had given him, his lot. He looked in his cup. It was the Lord himself. That's a good cup. Amen. Psalm 116, I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. 
Now at this table, we've been given a cup that's unlike all others. It's certainly not a cup of wrath, but it's a cup that's been given to us, <clears throat> but it's a cup that is shared. It's a cup that we share amongst ourselves and that we share with Jesus. It's a cup of communion. There's, as far as I know, there is no other cup like this. When we get right down to it, Jesus didn't present this cup as an illustration or as a means of defining something or as a representation of something. That's, that's not this cup. That's not why he spoke of it this way. There is no doubt that what Jesus said about this cup helps our understanding, but the main thing about this cup is that he gave it to us to drink with him. We don't want to drink a representation of his blood. When Jesus took the cup and said, this is my blood, he said so with the assumption behind it that it's, it's going to be drank. <clears throat> and this cup is the New Testament. He said that with the assumption, now we're all going to partake of it. So he's talking about realities here, not representations and illustrations. <clears throat> so when we are partaking of the cup, we are in communion with our Lord in partaking of the new covenant and his blood. We are the objects and recipients of the covenant, and he is the mediator of the covenant. So there's, there's communion there. <clears throat> we are in communion with each other and with Jesus when we drink this cup because it, it's his blood. I think Brother Given said this last week. You can't, you can't drink of Jesus' blood and not be in communion with him. <clears throat> and part of this, this partaking of the cup is recognizing whose blood it is what that blood accomplished, what effect the blood of Jesus has. It's the blood of the New Testament. <clears throat> it's the blood that he gave for our lives. <clears throat> it's the blood that energized the new covenant. Who is it that drinks of this cup worthily? It's those who drink of this cup with Jesus at his table. Those who have tender hearts for Christ. Those who have God's laws written on their hearts. Those who are the people of God and who know God. Those who realize that their iniquities and transgressions have been forgiven. And that God will not remember their sin anymore. Those who meditate upon the things that Jesus accomplished with this blood. Jesus is telling us what the cup is. But he's not defining just the container. And not just defining the drink that's in the container. Most importantly, he is speaking of drinking its contents, yeah. taking it into yourself willingly and in recognition and in agreement with him, with whose blood it is and why it was shed and the effects of it. All of this is the cup. Yeah. And th then now for the third thing that's said about this cup, said by the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 10, 16, the cup of blessing which we bless, mm -hmm. is it not the communion of the blood of Christ. So Jesus said, this is my blood. This cup is the New Testament. And Paul says, this cup is the communion of the blood of Christ. <clears throat> so in Paul's instance, he's, he's emphasizing the partaking of it. Amen. So when Jesus took the cup, he said, this is the blood, my blood of the New Testament. He said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. And Paul said, this cup is the communion of the blood of Christ. <clears throat> I, I must admit, this is, this is very profound and too much for me, but what little I've seen, I surely do love. <clears throat> Amen. Put, putting these three, three things together, these three sayings about the cup, when Jesus said, this is my blood, he was emphasizing his own vital part in this cup. What was presented as payment to God for our sins. He's saying, you are partaking of me. When he said, this cup is the New Testament, he is emphasizing what God has done because of his blood and our participation in it. Amen. And when Paul said the cup is the communion of the blood of Christ, he's emphasizing our partaking of it together with Christ in joyous belief and understanding of what has been done in him. So let's give thanks for our Savior that gave us this cup of blessing, the, the blood of the new covenant to share with him.